I'm here in Medjugorje and I'm next to Apparition Hill and the farmhouse of the visionary Visca and I'm this, what's your name? Sean. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm originally from uh, Stoke-on-Trent in England and I am living in Ireland in Derry mm -hmm. and I am studying in Rome for the priesthood. I've just been ordained a deacon in June. Wow, unbelievable. And you said you are late vocation. Late vocation, yeah. How did, how did you find your vocation, if I may ask? I found my vocation over many years really considering it but um, I made the decision in Medjugorje five years ago mm -hmm. and I went home from here and I resigned from my job. I've been in the radio business working on radio for 28 years mm -hmm. and I went home and I resigned and I, I um, had a year out and I went around different places. I came here, I went to Assisi, I went to Rome and I'd spoken to the bishop in between and uh, then I went to Salamanca for a proper duty year, period of time and then uh, to Rome to study for the priesthood and um, I was ordained in June and I came here after ordination with two seminarians who were also ordained deacons who'd never been here before and one of them brought their sister and her husband and this is me now coming back to Medjugorje before going back to Rome again to finish my studies. To become a priest. Yes, please God. And um, when did you hear the first time about Medjugorje in the United States? I heard about it about 28, 30 years ago. And then what did you think at the time when you heard about it? Well, it was very interesting because um, one of the visionaries came to Ireland mm -hmm. and there is a lady called Donna who lives in Medjugorje and her husband, Maka, owns Paddy Travel, her and her husband, Paddy Travel, that do all the buses and the accommodation for Marian pilgrimages and for other people. And her father was a friend of mine and they often talked about Medjugorje. And when one of the visionaries came to Ireland, I interviewed her through a translator in my studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I heard about it a long time ago, but I hadn't really a big draw or desire to come until about maybe 15 years ago. And then I felt this urge to come and I came and uh, I loved it. I came first to Apparition Hill. The first thing I did was came to Apparition Hill. And when I came to Apparition Hill, then I um, felt a great peacefulness and I fell in love with Medjugorje and I've been many times since. Mm -hmm. And what would you tell people why is it so special, Medjugorje? Medjugorje is special because of the peace, because of the people that you encounter, the stories that you hear, and because you feel the presence of the mother here, Our Lady and she makes you feel loved and she makes you feel worthwhile and she brings you always not to her but to Jesus she leads you to Jesus that's her role and uh, the church is very alive here there's lots of families here there's lots of people who are searching here there are people with all kinds of hurts and problems that they're carrying here lots of people who uh, maybe are grieving or have addictions or difficult situations in their lives they come here for healing and uh, they find it and it's a great place and we're very blessed to have it mm -hmm. you pray the rosary i pray the rosary every day why I always did pray the rosary i've always prayed the rosary um even when i was working and for the years i was working i used to pray driving to work every day because i used to work about 24 miles from where i lived mm -hmm. 24 kilometers maybe it was and uh, i used to pray the rosary driving to work every day i always have um it's i suppose goes back to my mother and her faith she used to take me to um adoration and benediction in the week or i used to go with her anyway although mm -hmm. i'm from a big family i was probably the the youngest with my twin sister so I used to go and I suppose uh, I went to Lourdes when I was very young maybe I don't know maybe 14 mm -hmm. and um, I've always had a great uh, affection for Our Lady mm -hmm. and uh, so that's why. What do you gain from it, praying the rosary? What do I gain from praying the rosary? It's a good rhythm it's a rhythm of prayer it keeps me in touch uh, it's a discipline and it's important and if ever I go through a day and I don't pray the full rosary I know in my heart when I haven't prayed it even though I'm not always fully engaged because we're human and we do get distractions in our heads but as long as you try and make the effort keep that connection going it's a circle so you keep the connection going beautiful and um, what would you tell atheists what is God the Father for you uh, well, I think Our Lady says atheists, she doesn't call people atheists, she says people who have not yet come to know the love of Jesus. 
So um, I, do, I don't think of people in terms of being atheist. I just see people as uh, people who are on a journey and um, maybe just waiting for their hearts to be opened. But they need people to open their hearts and people can only open their hearts by being loving and being merciful and being kind and being good. And we're all hopefully trying to do that. And even people who have no professed belief in God Many of them are trying to live good lives, so God is still working through them and in them. Mm, beautiful. And what would you tell people? Why should they come once to Medjugorje? What is so special about this place? I think if you come here, I've just met a man um, just before I met you, and I was going back to my hotel because it was raining, and uh, I love here because it's sunny, and I like the sunshine as well. Not too much, but I like it when it's sunny. And it was raining, and I thought, I'll just go back to the hotel. Mm -hmm. And instead of going back to the hotel, I bumped into a gentleman who was looking for Apparition Hill, and he was, didn't know where it was. And he said he's come here for his sister and for his nephew because she asked him to come and bring a petition to Apparition Hill. He's traveled a long way. He's only here for two days. He flew into Sarajevo, he hired a car, and I just met him and I said, oh, Apparition Hill, I was trying to explain where it was and it was a bit awkward to explain from where I was. And something prompted me to say, oh, I'll go with you. And it, it was raining. And as soon as we started to walk, the sun came out. <laughs> and he, uh, I, got, I stopped at uh, a shop where Mariana does the Divine Mercy and I got a stick for him and we walked across the fields together and we started to talk and share our story and I walked with him to the Blue Cross and he said we were meant to meet and I said I'm, I, I'm sure we were so we had a nice conversation and he's just gone up Apparition Hill and maybe we'll meet later on again and that's what Medjugorje is about it's about these little encounters like I've just met you for the first time although I've seen you I didn't you just called me over here and, and you said who you were and I said oh, I've seen you on Facebook because I have I've seen your uh, work and the stories that you uh, share and the witness that you're offering and bringing this message to people. It's a, it's a great way to bring the message to people just through ordinary people sharing their stories and you're always so interested in people. So I've been watching you f even in Rome. I'd seen your your um, your clips and thought it was very interesting how you do it. And you do these walking tours and things and that. And that. I think you do you do them on a bicycle as well, yes. yeah. And um, okay. just I was just walking past and you called me over and there you are. Here we are talking. Isn't that Medjugorje? Yeah, it's Medjugorje. Like the divine coincidence. It is, so. yeah. It's, it's God incidences, you know. And you would say also, like because they say heaven is touching earth in Medjugorje, is that true for you? Absolutely, yeah. Amazing. How would you describe it? Uh, I think really it's something you have to really experience you know mm -hmm. it's very hard to explain because uh, you know many of the experiences you have here are personal mm -hmm. for yourself you know so uh, somebody would have to come and encounter it themselves you know mm -hmm. and why would they come well come and see oh man, that's so true and what would you tell people like, like who are discerning for vocation what advice would you give them you went through the process mm. you found your vocation what would you tell them? Well, I remember the priest saying to me, the last thing he said before I made the decision was step, I, th I think it's time, Sean, to step out into the deep. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, it's our own, you know, I suppose lack of trust or, you know, am I worthy? Well, nobody's worthy, you know, God makes you worthy. God is a person that brings you forward and helps you. But if you make that decision and you show trust and faith in God, mm -hmm and you believe that maybe you have a call, you have to test it. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe your call is to single life or to married life or to some other way of life. But at least if you try, you can say, well, I, at least I tried that. And when you do make the effort, God opens the doors then, so it makes it possible. Wow, thank you so much for this beautiful interview. Thank you.